So I just wanted to show you right out of the gate, even though the doors are closed, what kind of a draft I have in my grow space. That is my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. Yes! doors are closed and you'd think I had the terrace door open with the way that spike is moving and bopping around. The fact that anything gets to bloom in here during the winters borders on a miracle. We are in the grow space. Well, let's just call it by what it is. We're in the winter holding space. Consider yourself welcome indoors. The patio is non accessible today because the weather is deteriorating. The fact that we are now in spring, well, it would appear that as per winter doesn't want to let go. However, a while ago my Angraecoids had bloomed out and I have them facing me when they are in bloom. But now that they've bloomed out, I need to do a little bit of a shuffle. So that is what is going on in this video. Seeing as it's a dull day, the orchids can't go outside. I've got some time on my hands before my sidekick, who you may hear as a reaction every once in a while, has to come out for his free flight. I could have done this a couple of weeks ago, but it was nice weather all this time. So the most important thing for me is to get my orchids outside, give them some natural light, and the Angraecoids just had to wait a little bit longer before I could flip them so that their growth habit is respected and maintained, which is towards the light. Don't want to stress them out any further. I do apologize for dirty floors. It is what it is this time of year. It is a very tight squeeze. Maneuvering around this space is not a pleasure. It is anxiety inducing. I hope you can see past that and I hope you can see past any kind of dusty leaves that may appear on your screen. I also have natural fertilizer because I've got wild birds coming to visit Ciliano. Plus you may see pups walking in and out being all up in my business in my feet. It's wonderful to be able to switch the lights on. It's the weekend. The electricity rates are at the lowest during the weekend, but I very rarely switch the lights on. Normally my orchids all go outside. However, it's a dull day. The timing gives me the opportunity to put the lights on. If I wasn't filming the process, I would be working in the dark. Everybody's just going to benefit from the lights being on. And while I go about doing what I'm doing at the moment, shuffling and moving orchids and flipping my Angraecoids around again, I am going to take this opportunity and in all seriousness, thank you so, so much for your support on the channel. And if you would be so kind as to subscribe to the channel, if you aren't already subscribed, I would really appreciate that as well as a like. Not sure if this video is worth sharing, but you know, maybe you'll feel so inclined to share it. If I break anything, trust me, I will let you no, I apologize for sounding like I'm talking through clenched teeth. Full transparency, I am talking through clenched teeth. I hate moving these Angraecoids. So much can go wrong. I won't elaborate, but so much can go wrong. And oh, doing this kind of a job, it really takes 100% focus. <laughs> It's absolutely fabulous because I get to reclaim prime real estate as well as check for pests on angles I haven't been able to look at for several weeks. This time of year, where the roots of my Angraecum Crestwood were, <laughs> that is prime real estate when it comes to light. So woo, oh, I'm so happy to get that back. Crestwood does need supporting, but I do want to show you something. The black dot on the center leaf is where I marked where the leaf was peeking out at the apex down here on the day that the orchids came inside. So this is 
how much she has grown <laughs> since mid and November, something like that. Doesn't mean she's that slow of a grower, it just means she doesn't have the conditions during the winter to do any better, but at least it's growing, she's safe. The next time I move them is to take them outside, which will be end of April. Hopefully end of April. Now, just to re-establish some of the orchids over there, if you would like to still join me for that, because I have some rescue bifoliate cattleyas that could do with a higher light levels than they've been getting for the past weeks. Just gonna mess with my Tenebrosa a little bit because I haven't seen her angles for a very long time and I saw a little colony of crawlers just starting to try and get comfortable there on the back of a leaf that I couldn't see before. But they are history now. Mom and dad are gone as well. So the babies are gone. Thank goodness for that. Earlier, I already treated my Sagarique Wax African Beauty and my Catlianthe Little Fairy because, yeah, I did a number on them. So they are in full on rescue mode and they have been under my scrutiny since the winter started because, again, weak orchids and scale. My Tenebrosa is not a weak orchid. She hasn't bloomed for me yet, but having said that, being so close to the Catlianthe and the Zagarig wax, these guys, they will migrate. So I'm not sure if I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna move the Catlianthe a little bit over, get her back to over here. Because these guys, yes, they need a lot of light, but you don't wanna blast them. You don't wanna stress them out. They don't wanna be in the dark either, the way they have been, but other orchids can now go in the front here, which is something that I haven't done for a while. They always had to stay in the back during the blooming phase of the Crestwood. This is so much better. That is my Lelia Pacavia, also constantly being scrutinized for scale. For the time being, we're doing very well. She is scale free. And who else can go there that needs a lot of light? All of them, really. <laughs> but another one that I've always got under scrutiny for scale and also magnesium deficiency is my Lelia Zip. So she can go over there. And then that will leave me the little front shelf for all the 15 centimeter pots that come in. And if I cannot reach over to <laughs> this shelf, because ta-da, let me straighten the picture. If I can't reach that because of the conditions, then at least two or three highlight orchids can get parked right down in front of the other cattleyas. So I've got my scale scrutiny corner to my left, somewhere I can look at things every single day. And while we're here, check out that spike of Jack of Diamonds. Look at this. I don't know if they're gonna open fully. They don't have enough light at the moment to open fully. They're taking their sweet time, but this is an impressive spike. And for the time being, I would like you just to take that in, in the event that this spike doesn't make it fully. Isn't that impressive? I absolutely love it. And I hope you can see it clearly and try and zoom in for good measure. What about that then, huh? Impressive. Very, very pleased. And while we're here, in case you're interested, if you're still here, thank you so much. This is what the floor looks like. Yeah, it's been that chilly. I've also brought my Epidendrum Schweinfortianum inside. Selogeny Lime Bay stays inside until mid-May when the night temperatures are warm enough. And there is my Guatemalensis. So I'm trying to always very gently touch the sheaths to see if there's anything filling in those brown sheaths. I don't dare squeeze harder. It could just be air. It could be that they're a little bit chubby, but either way, she's alive. They all are alive. <laughs> At least all the ones that are in here are alive, but that's for another video. The other ones have already exited the gross space. So you see the tight squeeze? I was not kidding when I say it's a tight squeeze and then that Jack of Diamonds spike, ooh, and my elbow, they would clash. <laughs> oh, you can tell the relief in my voice. Anyway, I poured just RO water into the Crestwood tub. Mainly this is about humidity. The roots have gotten so long they don't fit into the tub anymore. And the bossery got 600 parts per million of fertilizer because those roots are still hard as nails. Nothing has gone soft on me. So I'm fertilizing her at 600 parts per million. Relief. Oh, happy days. 
I have a feeling this video was a little bit of a weird one. I still hope that you enjoyed it. And the fact that you watched to the end, thank you so, so much. I get to wish you a wonderful day, but as per, there is a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.